Should we start it? Yeah. All right. Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel today. I don't do a lot of these live events. I thought it'd be a really fun idea while the PGA is going on just up the street to come out here on the range. And I wanna thank, by the way, Oak Tree National and Steve Kimmel. Hey, Steve, thanks for joining us. Thanks for letting us come out and do this live segment. I wanna start by talking a little bit about Graves Golf and the single plane. Now, today, we're fortunate enough to have my brother, Tim Graves, who's my partner and co-founder of Graves Golf here. And one of the things that we're gonna do is bring Tim in and we're gonna discuss the mission of Graves Golf. And let me kinda tell you what that is. Over the last 22 years, we started this 22 years ago, which is kinda hard to believe sometimes, Graves Golf. And Graves Golf is based on simplifying the game of golf. In other words, we believe the game is way too complicated. We also believe that just like on this YouTube channel, you guys probably surf around and look for, for instructional pieces. We believe even, even that's too complicated. So we went on a mission 22 years ago to simplify the game of golf with an easier way to play, which is the single plane swing. Now, it started really when Tim and I met Mo Norman and we saw what he was doing and what people were calling idiosyncratic, what people were calling weird and different, believe it or not, was actually a simple way to do the exactly what everybody's trying to do is, is hit a golf ball, pure, straight, consistent, and play better golf. So all those things that we discovered, and now it's just not us saying this, it's been proven by science and data and research and all the stuff Tim and I have done over the years, we're now on a mission to teach the entire world an easier way to play. And now thousands, I mean hundreds of thousands of golfers, we can ask Tim this, we have hundreds of thousands of golfers who are now enjoying better golf from the single plane swing. So that's what the mission of Graves Golf, that's why you're here if you wanna learn more about the swing. We're gonna discuss that today. We're gonna to discuss basic swing fundamentals. You guys can post questions if you'd like. You can put in some comments. We'll be happy to answer single plane swing questions. Tim, is, who's an absolute short game master, we'll be happy to answer questions about wedges and the short game and putting and anything you wanna talk about today while we're out here. Now, as we get Tim up here, let me tell you a quick story about Tim. I basically, don't know of a better player in the PJ section than my brother, Tim Graves. And I don't have to go through all the tournaments he's won. He is basically one of the greatest players in this section I've ever played with. And he's probably one of the best players across the PJ country as far as a competitor. He's one of the most competitive players. So it's not just Tim out here talking swing mechanics and teaching you parts of the swing. It's also, if you, ever, if you want to talk competition, Tim's the guy to talk to how good he is under pressure. And I'll just tell you a quick story before I bring him up. We were playing a tournament together, and luckily I've, I play a lot of golf with my brother, and we're usually in competition, and I mean, you know, we, we basically, we're a really good team together, and I'll just tell you how Tim, how good he is in competition, because if you have questions today, please ask those. We were playing a shot here at one of the most difficult golf courses in the country, and it was right here on 18, and this is my brother's mentality. Usually we're coming in with a couple holes left. It's tight, we either are one shot behind or we have to make a birdie coming in. And I've done this numerous times with Tim where we have to make a birdie. And nobody, I've never seen this before, the whole location was tucked back left on the 18th hole, which is a very difficult location. It's behind a pot bunker, there's no room to miss it left. There's a tree, you actually have to carry a tree on the left side of the green to get it back to the hole location. And there's Tim there with a seven iron in his hand into the wind. And I'm like, look, I'm like, let's hit it the middle of the green, but we have to make birdie, right? And Tim, I, I don't know how he did it. He fires this shot just right of the flag with this tiny bit of draw, carries the bunker and rolls to about eight feet. Now, I can tell you right now, there is not a player in this world that could hit a better shot than that, how impossible the shot was, and he makes birdie. That's the type of competitor my brother is. So I love hanging out with him, I love talking. I definitely love playing competitive golf with him. He's the best partner to have, and I'm glad to have him here today. So, Tim, come on in here. Let's let's start talking about single blade swing. But I want to I want to post a question to you. Well, thanks for the introduction. By yeah, way. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It was, no, it's, that's it's that's true. the kind part of the brother talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I can talk about other stuff yeah. too. <laughs> um, but you know, most of the people that watch the YouTube channel, mm -hmm. um, you know, I talk to a lot of them because they ask questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are on the fence. I don't really understand it. There's a lot of misconceptions about the single point swing, like it loses different distance mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. I think we got to cover some of that today. Okay. But if I said to you, um, t t just tell me about 
uh, our experience over the last 22 years, mm -hmm. and if people, what, what commitment's a big part mm -hmm. of, of being a part of this. Tell me what you would give, advice you would give to somebody that's like, okay, I'm, I'm struggling with my golf game. I've been doing this right. for 20 years. I mean, our average guy struggled right. for 20 right, years. Right, right, right. Give them, give us well, some advice. Well, I can give you my story. I mean, I'll, I'll throw you my story in because the number one question I get is why I went to single plane swing. I mean, because, you know, you were the guy who came in here and you're the geometry slash, you know, figure out the angles and the and video, video, video of the swing. And, and I was more, so always the very mechanical person. I mean, that's, that's what you're, me, yeah. which, and I was always the one that was, how do I take it to the course? How do I take it to the course? Let's go play. How do I take it to the course? What's the feel? And so th that's why we're so different. And that's why we're good partners and we're out there. But the reason that I became interested in it is because when we were playing out in the mini tours and I was playing in the in mini tours trying to make the PGA advance, trying to qualify for at that time the bot comms and everything. And I'm playing with some of the best players in the world. I mean we're playing with the, the Chad Campbells, the Ryan Palmers and the Zach Johnsons. I mean this I mean that's the age group we're in, but that's the guys we're playing with. And it was amazing and it, and it blew my mind because I would go, we'd go out and we'd play, well, I'd play with these guys and they'd go out and shoot 64 one day or 65 one day. I mean, and of course it's a good golf course. And then she'd 79 the next day or 78 the next day. And I'd watch him play and they all had pretty good short games, but they'd lose their ball striking overnight. And it just blew my mind. I mean, I was like, I'm watching these best players in the world literally lose their ball striking overnight. And I'm like, you can, there's no way you can sit there and be consistent and compete with that out there. Not like I wanted to. And so when I came to you, remember, in 95, 96, 97, I was a top 25 amateur in the world. I mean, I was ranked. I mean, as, you know, because I played a lot of amateur events. Right. It's not because I was a great player. It's because I played a lot of amateur events. I had the ability to do that. And the only guys that were beating me were the Tiger Harris, the, the Tiger Woods, the Tim Harris's, things like that. The guys that played full time. The guys that were amateurs full time. Well, then all of a sudden, you show me Mo. We meet Mo. I'm watching Mo, and this guy hit it perfect all the time. Well, let me say something real about that real fast. Mo, unfortunately, Mo's not with us anymore, right. but it's hard to describe it, it, how incredibly pure the ball striking was. But what you just said is what I want our audience to understand is that it's not about, it's, it's not only Mo hit it so great, it's that he missed it great. He, he that was the thing. He consistently was, he, he's never in trouble, number one. Number two, day in and day out, good days and bad days for him. Days he woke up stiff, days he woke up tight, days he woke up perfect, days he had a cold, days he didn't have a cold, the days he felt good, days he felt bad, he had a good. Yeah. I mean, and, it, and, and, and like consistency is such an important part right. of that. Like it's not how, because, because it's not bombing it out there, you know, it's really how consistent are you every single day? And, and, the, and the thing that just fascinated me was that, You'd watch guys go out. I mean, I'd come here practicing with Chad, and we would go hit five to six hundred balls in an off day. I mean, and I mean, I remember walking off this one range one time. It was kind of a dirt range, and he's just covered in dirt from toe to heel. I mean, I remember going to McDonald's with them. We're walking to McDonald's. I'm just laughing. We're laughing at each other because literally, we're just covered in dirt from hitting balls all day. And he goes out the next day and she's like 77. Yeah. I mean, and I'm like, and this guy's. I mean, this guy's one of the best, yeah, the best players yeah. in the world. We I always mean, played for a second. One, no, so. yeah, but he was one of the best players out there. And I was like, where did this come from? And then you watch Mo, and he went and hit balls for three days in a row. Yeah. He drop a ball down from the very first ball he hit to yeah. the last ball he hit was dead freaking perfect. The very first round I played with Mo, the very first shot on a course I ever played with Mo was at Greenleaf mm -hmm. in down in Florida. And Mo I didn't Mo Mo and I were friends. Mm -hmm. we, we we you know that's why we were playing golf together. But Mo wasn't super, a super social guy. You know, mm -hmm. he didn't you know he was going, Hey how's it going Todd? Right. You know, he was just like, we're gonna play golf. And Mo's wandering around. He just shows up in his car, gets out of his car, grabs his clubs, wandering around, let's go Mo, let's go Mo. He walks up, puts the tee down, wham, hits it right down the middle of the yeah. fairway. Didn't even warm up. Well, <laughs> and the other thing, and, and you know, I mean, there's, a, there's there's a million Mo stories, but the other thing is, you know, the time you go out there and you're playing with Mo and you hit, you work, hit down the fairway, you're hitting down the fairway, and you're looking at me saying, "Look at that water." I mean, it's really tight hole, good shot. And Mo's like, "What water? What water?" Yeah, yeah. He never saw yeah. it, and he's yeah. like, "How did the whole world not see water on both sides?" Yeah. And he didn't see it. Yeah. You know, so what? I mean, he's hitting it so good, he's focusing on what blade of grass he wants to hit on in the middle of the fairway at what distance. Right. And, and to me, so I always believed. I had a short game that could compete with anybody. I felt when I stood, I never sat in the first tee saying I have the best long game or I'm the best ball striker. But anytime I step in the first tee, I say I do have the best short game out here today. Meaning you can have it blowing 40, you can have it 100 degrees, right. you can have it raining. I want those conditions. Right. You know why? Because that, that's who's going to win the game, the best short game. Right. I mean, I'm just watching the thing in the PGA Championship last night, and they're showing all the shots around the greens. Oh. And, they're, and, and you know why? Because 
for these next two days, it's going to be 90 some degrees. It's going to be blowing out of the south 20 miles an hour, and they're going to go play. And Saturday, it's supposed to go 30 out of the north, and it's supposed to go 60 degrees out. Well, guess what? This whole entire golf course just completely changed. Yeah, and, and the other thing too is there's, there's only two par fives, right? right? right. So there's, well, there's really no opportunity. And, and most of them, they're not even reachable anymore. Yeah. And so, and, yeah. and then all the but the thing was because remember, I held the competitive course record at Southern Hills for a couple of years till Mark beat it. I played in the U.S. Main Amateur. I'm a state main amateur. Wow, it's cool. I held that because, in, remember, I don't know if the story did this, but I hit six greens regulation. <laughs> really? Yeah. Shot six under par, chipped three times. Wow. So that's, it's that, you that's know. That's good it, stuff. But that, that in the Oklahoma State Mid Amateur Championship, okay? He shot six, four. Now, the course has been redone. It's all changed now, you know, different things. But, but the, the point is, is that it's a 100% short game course. Wow. And if you don't have that short game, a decent long game, you're not going to survive. Yeah, no, no. No, so. I think that's a good point that we basically say hey look i'm a technical swing guy right and i teach single plane swing right but that's not everything to playing good golf and if you're a guy who wants to go out and score better you better have a short game right I and mean, that's my biggest thing is like 100%. like i need to work on my short game all the time which the last is thing i need to work which on my is so striking. funny because this is a classic brother thing so we always talk about this in schools when you talk about the artist in the family there was the artist in the family i was the engineer of the family i was the one plus two i like the math i like the numbers i like that he was the artist he was the I'm going to go do the graphic design, the art, the, and then when you get into golf, it's completely I flipped. Just, I think we just try to overcompensate yeah, for our weaknesses. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I it's, it's completely flipped because I love to get over a short game shot and tell me six different ways you can play. It's just an overcompensation. Todd and I do this all the time. We'll get in the golf course, we'll have a shot, even a tournament, and, and he's walking. I'm like, why do you play it that way? He's like, it's the only way I know how to play it. I'm like, there's 18 I'm, ways to play this I'm shot, compensating. Todd. Yeah, there's 18 <laughs> ways to play this yeah. shot. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, and so, yeah. It's, yeah, to me, I'm like, Tim's, I'm always like, I got to shoot lower scores. I need to hit it closer. Right. And Tim's like, you hit it closer. You should get it up and down. Right. Yeah. Well, it's like yesterday then we can get into it but it's like yesterday and, and uh, we tell this story a lot and Todd was telling the story yesterday on Facebook but the time that I played in the Oklahoma Open across the street and played the first two rounds it was, it was a big event you know the Willie Woods the Bob Tways all of them were in the event and I, I was in second place going into the last final round and it was a big tournament I mean yeah, it was a they, big main tournament. Oklahoma used to be one of the one of the biggest to, uh, it was it state second, opens. It was, it was the second largest state, state open in the open, country yeah. and Todd's Todd. Todd I, I don't know if you were playing that week. Playing. You may have been in Asia or something. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, but I play the first nine of the last round, and I shoot a couple over. And I'm struggling a little bit. I'm hitting a little bit right, a little bit left. I mean, I'm keeping it in play, but I'm not making any birdies. I'm struggling a little bit, and I'm and I'm a couple back now. I'm like two or three back making the turn. And I get on 10, and I pull it off the tee, and I'm frustrated. Because my short game's good. My, I'm hitting it decent, but I'm just not hitting well off the tee. And Todd watched me hit it off 10 tee. And he saw me, saw me pull it, and I'm walking towards 11 T. As I walk from 10 green 11 T, I'll never forget this. I walk, Todd walks by me, and we say this. What did you tell me, Todd? I said two words, ball position. Yeah, he said ball position. My ball position, my driver had fallen back a little bit. That's all he said to me. It wasn't, hey, you're doing good. It'll be great, wonderful. You know, keep it going. You know, you, yeah. you'll get it. He said ball position. I immediately adjusted my ball position, my drive, and I birdied three out of the last seven holes. Yeah. And it was interesting. I ended up losing my shot, so he wasn't there early enough. <laughs> so, but. so one of the things that I think I want to talk today yeah. on the channel, and, and we need it, I want to get to yeah. where we're doing yeah. some yeah. technical stuff, but, but how, like the technique, but not just technique, having a technique that's almost mistake proof right because isn't that the goal like have a golf swing that's always good 100% because I don't I don't want to grind it out I can't pound balls anymore two two my two favorite things I've heard that uh, that are the greatest things in the world and let's get into some technique or this when Mo said I don't know how to hit it bad okay he said that I was I stood there and heard that a thousand times I mean, how many demos we do with yeah. what Mo did for us and the second one was when you would say Tim it is fascinating and you told me this you said when I had all the time to hit thousands and thousands of golf balls, this is before you got single play, and he goes, you struggled. And he goes, now you have no time to hit golf balls, and you hit it great every time you go play. Yeah. No, I and it's true, because we go play in three or four events a year. Like, we go play in Vegas and thing, and, we, and every single time we go out there, and Todd may not hit a ball for a month. No, I'm serious, because how busy we are. And we'll go out there, and the guys will play with, like, you got to be kidding me how good he just peered it. And it's like, yeah. and that's why I enjoy playing. I mean, because we, in Vegas, I missed one fairway. One fairway. And, and this, this is the beauty of it. And think about the partnership here. We go out and play in the best ball, and you got a guy who's never going to miss a fairway off a tee, ever, ever. My, I mean, my, my struggles are so, on short so, game. So let me give you a secret. Guess who always hits first because it takes total pressure off me. I mean, he's always yeah. in play. So, But that's that's the two biggest things where yeah. you don't hit balls anymore, you don't practice anymore, and you hit it pure. I have very little time to practice, right. and you, and, but right. that's why I love the single play right. swing. Right. Because, I mean, because I'm never that far off. Right. Like, it's it's just, like, I, I always stay pretty consistent in my training, right. and when I do practice, 
and it's just never that far off. Yeah. My deal is just go spend time on my short game. I'll, I'll never forget one time, well, we got, we got to get to this, but I'll never forget one time, we're doing a demo in St. Louis. Todd and I are doing a demo for a pretty big group, and it was a pretty windy day, and it was a chilly day, and I don't know what was going on, but Todd gets out there, and he's hitting it, and the fans and the uh, and the guys are just going crazy. Oh, that's so good, that's so good. And he's like, oh my God, that's unbelievable, it's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. They're just going crazy. It was about 40, and the demo lasted like 45 minutes. I hit a few, hit a few, and Todd just, they're going crazy. How good Todd's hitting it. And we get done, and I look at Todd, and I go, you hit it like crap, did you? And he go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was just so yeah. funny, because to the average public, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And to him, it was like, I didn't even hit it good. Yeah, I mean, there's demos, I would, uh, there's demos I've done where I don't miss a shot. Yeah. Like, just it's all yeah. the same. Right. And there's demos, you know, it's, it's going this way a little bit, this way, and it's fine. But I'm like, and everybody's like, oh, it's amazing. I'm like, nah, <laughs> I didn't have a good day. So, so his, what Todd f thought was his complete off day, by the, by the gallery watching, who watches probably a lot of golfers, was like, that was the most amazing thing I ever saw. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Tim, are we on just one camera here? We're just in one. Okay. So if we want to do face on, do you want to walk the camera over? Okay. okay. So let's, what I want to do, Tim, is, I, is I want you to point out, okay. I'm going to go into the single plane address. Yep. And you simply point out what single plane is. Okay. Okay. And so, let me just go in here and I'll go to the. Do you want to face it this way for now, just like because we're not. No, hitting, I, we can, can do that. Not like, move the camera. Yeah, because you're not gonna hit it right now. We're just doing the address, yeah. right? So sure. do, let, 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 let face on. Yeah, first. let's just go face okay. on this way. Right. Okay, let's do that because then we, if you want to hit something, we can move the camera. Hey, Tim, before you do, could you move your? Yep. Just to make sure that it's not disconnecting at all. Over here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Is anybody putting questions on there? Because yeah, I want, I want, I want to make sure we get to some of the questions. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So let's just go. Um, you just tell them basic address. Okay. Single plan. And what I want to do is when you talk about it. I want to talk a little bit about why. Okay. okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So the first thing we're going to look at, I mean, we're going to look at is a straight line position you have from the lead shoulder down to the club head. So this, that, and I mean, if you talk about true single plane from a face on position, it's a straight line position right here. You can call it the rod, you can call it whatever you want to do, but it's, it's the bun of the club or relating to the pivot point. Okay. So we have one. So if you look from the face on, we've got a straight line. The second thing we're doing on this is that obviously from the single plane that we have is we're looking at a little bit of a wider stance than most people, distance to the ball, which is a little bit longer. But now with this wider stance, with distance to the ball, with the straight line, we're going to have some shoulder tilt that's going in here, right? Shoulder tilt. Okay. And then notice the other thing we do here is most people who set up in a single, in a conventional type swing are going to have too much knee flex when they set up. Okay. But ultimately, you know, you can go into the whys here. Ultimately, when you get from a pure face on, we'll get them down the line in a second, you're looking at a position here of the straight line set up when you start. Now, because the beauty of what we do here is you, in the simplest way to do this is we start where we finish. That's probably the simplest way you can do that. And you want to go into the whys in that? Let's go down the line real quick. Okay. Point, point out down we, the line. Yeah, because okay. the down the line is going to give you more. Yep. Okay. Okay, so down the line, here's the same thing you see here. You see the straight line here from the, the shoulder to the club head. The second thing you see is you see the lead arm actually slightly below the trail arm. So if you look on this, the trail arm's below the lead arm. Excuse me, trail, I'm sorry, trail arm below the lead arm. So you're gonna have right here, when you set up right here, you'll see that this is slightly flexed and below. So it looks like, if you look from a down the line view, he's actually coming from underneath the club instead of on top of the club, and that's a big deal. Yeah, and we're creating the plane alignment, which right. is the same plane we impact on. Right, okay. the next thing you're looking at is when you look at the shoulders. So if you look at the lead shoulders, and believe it or not, the lead part of the shoulders are going to be square to slightly closed. The back part are going to be square. Okay, so you look at the shoulder blades in this. Okay, the next thing you look at, and this is the perfect, the distance of the golf ball. This right here, he's got a six under his hand, six iron, and he's 26 inches from the golf ball. The traditional, conventional golfer will be 21, 22 inches. So what he's done here by creating the space or creating the distance is he's created tons of space in here to allow this elbow to clear the body, to allow the body to, believe it or not, almost sit down through the impact and not lift through impact. So, because the true sense of a great single plane swing is, again, if you want to think of it simplicity, is we start where we finish. So notice, so he's going to sit right here. He's going to start here. He's going to go top of his swing. Now he's going to go back to impact. And that's starting to finish. Now, obviously, he's created speed. He's generated power. So he's sitting into the lower body. But what he didn't have to do is he didn't have to lift away from the shot. If you're too close to the ball to get the straight line formed at impact, you have to lift. Because here's one thing. Every golfer at impact, because of the force of the club, will create a straight line from the shoulder to the club at through impact. There's a certain particular distance there because so of the club. So if I stand too close, right. I've got to go up. You've got to go up because right. that straight line's form. It's, 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 just, it's, 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 it's just geometry because right. there's mass on the end of the stick and you're swinging the stick around the body. 
So it's going to try to line up with your arms. Right. So if you start low and it tries to line up, you got to have space. I don't have space. I got to make space. He's going to lift. Now, the problem is, you didn't go without space. Let's show him this again in real okay. time. The problem is, and this is the biggest I'm really tip. bad at this, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so now he's too cold. This is, but this is where conventional golfers sit up, okay? So he's probably 21 inches from the ball by now. By the way, I call this the one mistake right. because people talk about conventional versus single plane. Right. All conventional golf is really the same is if you have don't have space because your arms hang below the shoulders, which is what's taught. It's pretty much a tenant of, of, of instruction. 100%. And that's the problem. It starts right there because I don't have enough space. So right now he takes the club back. Okay, well, however I do that. Okay. okay. Now go to impact. He's gonna create a straight line because of the force. Now, because he doesn't want to stick this club three feet into the ground, he's gonna lift that lead that lead shoulder is gonna lift. As this lead shoulder lifts to create that line, now what he's done is he's pulled this shoulder out, he's put stress on the back to create that distance. Well, the two things that, there are more than two things, but the biggest thing that causes, or the issues that causes, is this. Is, it's number one, it's gonna destroy the back eventually. It's gonna create stress, and, and that's why 70% of golfers or 50 years of age have chronic back problems, because they destroy their back lifting. The second thing is, do that one more time. Too close. Too close. Okay. Figure out a As way. this shoulder lifts, this club's gonna come across. So that was, that's what creates the natural slice or pull yeah, or top. Everybody tends to come over right, it. Right, comes over top of it. Because they never learn how to get that club on plane and or under the plane. create room. Right. It's a hard thing to create room when you, when you don't have it. You don't have it. So, they, so there's a big lifting action. But, but I want to throw something in okay. here. Co the common sense of this thing. Well, here's what's interesting. And, and this is why it's so common sense. There's a couple different ways you can look at this. Take any kid who's never played golf in their life, and, and, and yeah. Todd's gonna do this, okay? So you hand them a club in their hand, hand just hand them a, a club, hand them a stick, and what are they gonna do? And now, most of them will split the hands, and they'll go just like this, and they'll get a wide stance, they'll reach their arms out, they'll split their hands, they'll try to hit it. Yeah. So the they human body- space. They create space, right. they point the stick at what they wanna hit, and they just go like this. They, they look like a hockey player. And that's what I saw in Mo, by right. the way. They look like a guy who plays hockey. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and so all of a sudden you say that they, the body is naturally set up to hit in that position. Natural. Right, it's natural. It's naturally hit up to that position. Well, then all of a sudden somebody grabs him, his mom, dad, grandpa, somebody else, and they say, you gotta stand close to the ball, you gotta drop your hands down, and guess what? Yeah. Now they're in an unnatural position. I gotta throw something in there, because you know everybody's watching Tiger uh, mm -hmm. out at PGA. Mm -hmm. Do you see his feet are down? Oh, 100%. Impact. 100%. His feet are yeah. down. Well, they've always been down for wedges. You know, everything else, you know how far he's away from a driver? It's yeah. like 36 inches. Yeah. He's further away from a driver than we are. Yeah. He has to yeah. be yeah. because his body, number one, can't lift anymore. As people start simplifying, right. it doesn't matter who you are, as you get older and you start simplifying, you're going to have to get space well, and make this natural. But if you want to really, we don't know what to get in that topic a lot, but think about it. Tiger's right leg is, I mean, he was limping pretty bad yesterday. It's, it's basically destroyed. I mean, any yeah. normal human being couldn't survive what he did. Right. And he's out there right now with a bad trail leg. Well, when you're lifting, what are you lifting off of? Oh, yeah. So he's oh, yeah. snapping these legs. Yeah. He can't do that can't anymore. Can't do that more. So, and he's strong. He's incredibly yeah, strong. But I bet you he hasn't lost any speed. No, he hasn't. You know, know why? Because he's, if you notice, he's bigger in the upper body than he was before. Well, I mean, just, it's all for body speed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to hit one. Okay. But what I'm going to do here is, is I, and I want to talk a little bit about the whys because because Tim talked about exactly what it is, but but there's a science behind it. And I'm not gonna go into crazy science, but in, in effect, what Tim pointed out was the position of my body has created a place where I don't make mistakes. Right. Like it's hard for me to make mistakes. And I'll show you what, what Tim pointed and, out. And, and the biggest thing that I want, when, you, when the people are looking at this, they haven't seen this before, or maybe they're pretty new to it, watch how we work or we hit into the body, and in particular the lower yeah. body, yeah. which is very athletic. So we hit into it, not away from it. Right. Because when you watch traditional golfers, they're hitting away from the body. Yeah. They're pulling away from the ball. Yeah. They're all pulling away and trying to hit a golf ball. We're hitting into it and into through our it. legs. Into, into, into the body. Into, right. into the strongest part of the body. Right. right? So, so we're taking pressure off of the weak parts of the body. Because, you know, when Mo would describe it, he would say, we'd say, you know, what, what do we, where do you get tired? Mostly my legs, my knees. What starts the downstream? My left leg. Into the knee, into he the knee. talked about his lower body. He, what did you say? He goes, I feel like I sit Sitting, when I hit yeah. the swing. He's always talking about hitting into a very athletic position in the yeah. lower body. So, so when I'm swing, I'll just swing, hit a couple and I'll, I'll just swing a few just so you can see it. But obviously, what Tim pointed out was this arm above this arm, aligning the club on the impact plane, creating this nice alignment with lead arm and club, nice alignment with trail arm and club and getting the right space, right? 100%. And so I'm gonna brace against the trail leg, create leverage, I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying this. I'm gonna create leverage, I'm gonna stabilize again and just swing the arms through on the plane. And what you get, and I'll swing super easy on this, is you get a club path that planes, 
planes, planes. And the cool thing about that is every player that plays golf, even the guy Tim talked about who stands too close, has to plane the club. 100%. So the question becomes, what's the easiest way to plane the club? Not because that you, remember, not, not that you're playing. We it didn't create the word plane. No, that was created by Ben Hogan. You know, that that was the plane, yeah. the plane of glass that you hit. Right. The problem is, is that traditional conventional we created golfers single plane, <laughs> one plane, single plane. Here's the deal: traditional golfers may have two, three. Who knows how many planes they have? At yeah. least two. Yeah. So we have one. So plane. we start it on the single plane, which mm -hmm. is the proper alignment. We take the club back, it planes, mm -hmm. we return it to the same plane, right. and we finish on the same plane. But that's, that's the simplest way to get this club to be on path. And, I mean, it corrects the path of the club, the face squares up, and the ball flies perfectly straight. The one thing, though, let's mention here, because I want to talk about this, because this is, I know what's out there, and I know a lot of the, the, the common misconceptions and thoughts. Okay, so I want you to step over this again. Okay. okay? Too many people think that when they talk about a one plane, it's like having a circle here and you're swinging like, on the circle. It's like it's on the same It's like plane. on the same, because right. like, here's the deal. There is a huge difference between same plane and one plane or single plane, okay? Yeah. Because, so I'm gonna show, we're gonna show you this, I'm gonna explain this. So pretend right now that we have a circle here, you know, like well, that you're hitting it, okay? Now, I want you to go to the top of your swing, okay? That circle has turned. Yeah. So it has shifted. So right now, your plane is this direction and your plane is over here. Okay, and tell them why, tell them okay. why it has shifted, okay? Yeah, I love this because people think, well, it should be on, so if, if you said it has to be on the same plane going back and the same plane coming down, that would mean the body's in the same position here on the way back as it is in the same place coming down, and it's not. And the science and all the research we've done and the measurements we've done, because the body's more rotated here, okay? So look where my hands are in the backswing. The body's more rotated here than when the hands are there in the downswing, but, and here's where it gets beautiful. It, the, it, it's not about making sure, see the, the mistake people make is they're trying to follow this plane. Right. And that's the mistake. You want the, the club to follow the body motion. There you go. The body motion. Because it's staying, on the, it's staying on the single plane relative to the body motion. In other words, look, this club's got a relationship to my body. It's on a plane to my body. So my body, the position of my body takes the club back. Now the club's in the same relationship to my body. And then when I stabilize and I come down, it's in the same relationship to my body. So all that matters is that this is on a single plane to my body, not to some imaginary and weird let's, circle Let's even there. simplify that more. So set up again. Let's talk about shoulder plane because this is what most people can see. Well, well I've measured all this. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah. Okay. And you've, you've, when we can, you're very specific. But so well, people see, again, before Tim does this, uh -huh. my torso's open, my shoulders are closed. I use these little things called right. closed because I don't call them closed. Right. I just say this arm's above this arm. Right, right, okay. right. That's right. why, right. I hate that turn closed. Okay. I know you do. Okay. So now, here's the shoulders right here. Now, the club right now is square to those shoulders. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. And the club faces square to those shoulders, correct? Square the target. Yeah, square yep. the target. Square the target into the shoulders. Now, go to the top of the swing. Okay. The shoulders have turned, right? Yep. Same relationship to the club. Yep. Now you've created hinge, you've created leg, and so on. You know, in the club, but the same relationship. Yep. Your shoulders are not, so the shoulders are turning, so the plane is doing what? It's basically shifting Turn, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we go back to impact. Shoulders go back to squaring up. Yep. Yeah, actually, through they, they square, pretty right. much square. Square. Yeah. Okay. Now club the same relationship. Now we go through and look where the shoulders go, and the club's following. Yep. Okay. So. This is what people, they really have a misnomer this because if you got in like one of the circles or whatever, you're not gonna be able to turn the shoulders. So when I see people on the circle, mm -hmm. and this is probably a question we'll get, mm -hmm. it's, to me it's a manipulation because right. they're manipulating the hand path, but they're uh, ignoring the natural movement of the body. Right. So what you want, like this, like what, I don't have a single point trainer with me right now, but we could grab it out of the cart. But here's the thing, if, if I keep the club to the same relationship, it naturally moves in, goes up to the single plane, comes down, naturally moves straight down. So that's a different position here right. versus there. Right. And then it goes to impact on the plane. It's moving relative to body. Okay. So do that one more time. So let's, let's answer this question here. So go okay. ahead, go to the top. Okay. 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 Now come down to what we call position three. Why is that in a different position? What's the reason that gets Well, there's a lot of reasons because, okay. because the body's in a different position. There's no okay. hinge in the hand. Right. Uh, the okay, arm, so, this arm is so not you folded. Said no hinge in the hands. Well, so, it's because his arm isn't folded. Okay. What does the hinge do in the hands? Well, it produces leverage. Okay, when leverage produces what? Speed. Right. So there's there's basically this extension away where it's this relationship maintains. Right. Right. I leverage the club, okay. 
and then now I got leverage, I bring the leverage down. Okay. And so that is a different position than that. Okay. And, and that's so, why you're seeing a different movement of the, that's why the, the hands cannot follow the same path. Right. And that's, but that is speed production. Yeah, that's yeah, speed. That's because yeah. that, a lot of people ask this. I mean, because you watch the guys that come in here, it almost looks like they have broken wrists when they're swinging. Oh, yeah. That's no. lack of speed production. Well, and uh, that's just because you're not moving this. This is your speed producer. This right arm is a big speed producer, and you can't keep it like this. You have to, if I'm going to skip a rock or throw a ball, I've got to get this wrist hinged, and i got the arm full. That's where my speed production, a lot of it's right. coming from. So i got to get this in a, a leveraged position. 100%. Um, but, but the goal of the backswing is to leverage a club. That's a good, good point. What is the purpose of a backswing? 100 percent that's why it's to, it's to get a club in the position to produce speed right that's right. all perfect. otherwise i wouldn't take it i'd just go like this well <laughs> if i get hit remember it. baseball players create a ton of speed and they start the they back start they the don't back go here because the ball's coming at them yeah, they, they don't start here and they create they leverage time. they're playing just higher but they're creating they're creating actually as much speed as, right. as the golfers are creating it's just what it's a higher play right that they're starting so now there's been professionals that tried to get the club yeah. start here, but here's the problem. And, when, and if you, and we can answer this question straight out. The reason why I was unsuccessful without having a backswing, because believe it or not, you start the downswing before you complete the backswing, yeah. which, it, ha which creates what? Yeah, it was, uh, well, lag. Lag, right, lag. right, right, right. So, so you have to have sequence. Right. And that's, it's hard to produce sequence when you're static. 100%. So you have to create some sequence in the right. swing, yeah. Sequence is an important part of timing and 100%. everything. So, okay, Tim, so let's do this. Let me, let me hit one again. Okay. Um, and then when I do this, I want to talk through what I call range of motion okay. stuff. Okay. So this is, a, again, again, a little bit technical and they can see some of this on my channel as well, but I'm going to hit this ball and I'm going to tell you what, there's, there's a couple, a couple things I'm doing with my body that make it mistake proof. Right. Okay. So let me just go ahead and hit one. And this one I'll, I'll come off my right foot. Okay. But, but keep in mind, my, my trail foot is on the ground through impact. Right. I come up afterwards. So one of the things that people always say, well, your foot's on the ground, you're mm -hmm. gonna lose speed. We mm -hmm. get that a lot. I mm -hmm. wanna address that. And here's the thing, when my foot's on the ground, as, as Tim knows, and Tim's foot's on the ground, our weight is not back there. Right. Our weight is right here. Into the lead knee. So we have moved, and I don't like even the word weight shift, because I've, I've, I've I call it stabilization. I've stabilized this lead foot, lead leg. I rotate as hard as I can 100%. around my pelvis. So I'm getting a full pelvis rotation. See that? Matter of fact, I've measured this. Mm -hmm. I got 35. I got 35 at impact. Well, 30 at impact, and then it goes all the way to 60 in my finish, mm -hmm. and then I stand up. So I'm getting a full range. All good players have around 30 to 40 mm -hmm. degrees of pelvis rotation impact. But what they're doing, like you said before, is they're jamming their leg up, right. compressing their back, up going outside. down. So I'm doing the same exact rotation with right. my foot down, right. but I don't need to lift the foot because why? I got, space. Can, you got space. I got space. I got space. So I can go down, like you said before, right. and not lift up. So I'm saving my back and right. not losing speed. So you're hitting the lower body because yeah. the biggest thing, and, and you know, and Mo always talked about in real simplistic terms because obviously he didn't film a swing a lot. He, you know, he didn't see a swing a lot. So he's describing feelings. And Mo would always say the two things that you'd say about that is I feel like I'm sitting in my downswing, and he'd always say, "What starts a downswing?" He'd say, "My left knee." My left knee. He'd always. Yeah. We, I mean, every time we did a demo, people say, "Mo, what we'll starts your downswing?" It's a common question. He'd always say, "My okay. left knee." But I'll, but I want to go into science now. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, how do you go into your left knee, right? Not because it's not a left knee move. That's a left knee move. But it's a pelvis movement. It's a push from inside this leg. It pushes me into that knee. So I've got to. So the backswing again. Backswing is a huge. Backswing yeah. becomes really important right. because I've got to be braced against the inside of this leg to get into that knee, to, to push into that so I can stay there. Because one of the most common mistakes we see, and do that, said, do that again face on, one of the most common mistakes we see is when our students take it to the backswing, go to the backswing, and they straighten this leg out. So they straighten that out because they, they, don't, and they can't push, and then they get the weight and it's not in the ball of their foot anymore. They can't push. Instead of pushing, they fall back. Yeah, so watch. So this, so in, instead, of, instead of being a push like that, it becomes a lift like right. that because they're locked out. So they lift, and even though it looks like the pelvis goes forward, that's going up, I'm going back. And then they go, oh, I can't seem to get right. to the ball. Yeah. And then and that's where you get the guys that I'd never make a divot, I don't hit it anywhere, I lose control, I, how come I can't? And that's where you start getting the people saying, I don't hit this, this methodology a, a, anywhere because they're not hitting into the lower body. Because here's what's interesting. When we describe your position at impact, we're saying both knees are flexed towards that lead toe. Yep. Both knees. Yeah. So because what we go, so come up here and do that. Real okay. Quick. Um, face them. Okay. No, actually, down the, down the line. Okay. 
Do you need this club or that club? No, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good on this. So it's a little, good. It's a little shorter. It's good. Okay. So, so when Tim when Tim does that, so stabilization. That's why we want the foot turned out. He's rotating his pelvis. Right. This knee is coming in, but it's not. Right. So it's going in towards that lead toe. Yeah. Because the biggest thing we see is they make the mistake of doing this or the lead or the lead. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But if you, we're not going to impact in through position four. Both knees are going to that lead toe. And when I do that, that's where I feel like I'm driving off the side of the ball of that trail foot. Yep. This knee going towards that lead toe is that drive. Yep. And, you know, there's a very famous picture oh, where he's through impact and this leaned over. Oh, I okay. love that. It's the famous picture ever. He's in a driver. I love that. Okay. So he's literally, the weight transfer is going to the foot. The heel's down. It's heel's not down. flat on the ground. It's down. Yeah. The foot's not lifted up. But that's how much force is through the shot. Yeah. Didn't Mo, one, we described one time, he used to wear the insides of his socks. So watch this. Watch what I can do with Tim. So let me see your club for a second. Pretend, put your hands out. You're gonna hit a club ball. Yep. Okay. So why do we want the foot down? Why do we want the knee flex? You know, I've been through this before, but you haven't seen me do this. What I'm gonna do with Tim is I can go, uh, pretend you're at impact. Okay. Yep. And going to the knee. Keep your foot around. Yep. And, and this is as much as I can rotate Tim's pelvis. That's as much. Yep. I've I've I have reached his range of limit. So in other words, if I keep that knee flex and that foot down, yep. I have made to, I created. A dynamic where Tim can't screw that up. Right. Because if I now, if all I do from here is I'm trying to keep my knee flex, but I do this, yeah. what just happened? Where yeah. do my shoulders go? Exactly. Because well, because the pelvis is wide right. open. Because remember, the, the shoulders directly to the pelvis or the hips. You know, we talked the torso yeah. to, the, to, the, to the hips. If you get the hips open, what do you, you can't get the shoulders back. That's a separation. So if you get them too open here, what's happening to the shoulders? They're wide open. That's the slice, the over the top, the top. Now, I work on hitting into the knees, knees towards the lead toe, keeping the foot down. I've maximized what my hips, what my pelvis, yeah. what my pelvis can do. I've yeah. maximized that. Yeah. So, and that's what, that that takes the air out of the swing. That's awesome. Okay. So let's do another one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keep in mind that everything that mechanically I'm doing to, to, to swing here, showing you with Tim, is a mistake proofing of movement. Right. In other words, Tim, we teach a system. Correct. We have a model, right? We adhere to our model. Why? Because keeping the knee flex and foot down creates a limit in the pelvis for every human being. Right. Everybody gets that thing. No one gets 100%. I had a, I, I, I was going to tell you, I had a, uh, you know, Rita, uh, Pepe's mm -hmm. yeah, wife. Yeah. So Rita, one time we're having dinner and Rita goes, Todd, she goes, I can move my pelvis more than any human being alive. Because okay. I'm a flexible woman okay. Okay. and I can move my pelvis. Okay. And I'm like, Rita, and we're sitting here at a really nice Italian <laughs> restaurant and I go, Rita, stand up. <laughs> I go, Rita, stand up. And she, and she stands up and says, watch. She goes, I can turn my pelvis. And she goes, look. <laughs> and I, and I go, I go uh, stop. I go, Rita. Turn your foot, mm -hmm. put your knee just like that. Uh -huh. Keep it there. Keep that foot down and turn your pelvis side bend. Right. Turn your pelvis. She goes. <laughs> She's like, same thing. That's all she can do. do. I was yeah. like, Rita. Yeah. She goes, okay. <laughs> but but it's, it's a human right. limit, right? right? Okay. The next human limit mm -hmm. I want to put you in is I'm going to side bend. Right. Okay. So face this time. Okay. Face them this time. Okay. Side bend is this part. Now, why do I want side bend in the body? Well, first of all, that's where you are at impact. Show, mm -hmm. show them impact real quick. Just go to impact. Boom. Okay. You can see at impact his, his shoulder has he's rotated the shoulders more open. The tilt of his body has lifted the shoulder. Watch this. Okay. So if I lift my shoulder, okay, do this, Tim. So I'm gonna lift your shoulder, okay. go to tilt. Okay. Lift your shoulder, I'm gonna rotate it this way. Okay. I'm gonna hold this here, I'm gonna rotate that way. Rotate as much as you can that way. Can't, that's it. Okay. So I can, I'm gonna try really hard. <laughs> now now I'll even turn Tim's shoulder a little yeah. bit. So look, look at his hands exactly. That's as, far, that's as far as Tim can it. turn his So hand. if I had a glove right now, the club's still facing the target. That is your club face. Yeah. So because I lifted the shoulder and isolated the arm, that's as far as yeah. Tim can yeah. rotate his so, arm. So with the shoulder, so with the arm lifted in the single plane, and we've isolated now the lower body, so the shoulders can't get open, that's how all you I got. Screw, how do you screw that up? Can't. Be, can't. And, but, it's, but it's due to side bend, Right. this shoulder coming up, and then turning right. so it's open so it hits that position. Because can you only, because just imagine this, so do that, so we'll get to that position there again. I'm stuck there, I can't. I'm, I'm a wall. I'm, I'm, gotta, a, I'm gonna try not to go any further than that. Okay, now, no. all I've gotta do to mess that up is do this. Yeah, see? So now what did the shoulder do? The shoulder it's goes dead. back. It's dead. It's up. Now do it again with the knee okay. and shoulder. Okay. So I call this the wall. You can't go any further. I call this the wall. You're hitting this into the wall right. and that into the wall. Right, can't go any, you literally can't go any further. Now, then, then, just, just, you, just boom. And you wanna know the ultimate, boom. what this ultimately creates? is me playing tournaments with him and the guys every single time go, I've never seen anybody hit a driver better. Yeah. I've written articles about that. Yeah. It's like, I mean, we're under pressure. We're playing in courses that are in phenomenal courses. Like, it's ridiculous how he hits his driver. I mean, he never misses a fairway. And I'm like, yeah, because he's hitting that position. And these guys are getting nervous and they're spraying to the right and they're hooking to the left and they're hitting a quick hook off the tee, just like all the pros yeah, do. Yeah, because I really, honestly, like when, with your short game, with my driving, yeah. I honestly, 
when I line a club, line a ball on the fairway, I just slam the club into the wall. Right, right. <laughs> That's all I do. Well, it's funny because I just aim it and I slam the club into the, the wall. He'll take the driver, and he does this early in the round. He'll do it later, and he'll do the practice swing. He'll set up. You don't take a practice swing. You just go like this. And you just go back to the impact. Wall. And you, get, you hit the wall. And you I rehearse. That's his pre shot. I rehearse the wall. Right. right. I rehearse the wall. Then right. I go up there and I just, I just hit. Right. Matter of fact, I think golf swing is a really bad term for what we're doing here. <laughs> I think it is too. I think because we're not swinging a club. What we're right. doing is we're taking a we're taking a a, 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 a tool, which Ooh. is a, a, a basically a club. We're leveraging it. Creating speed. We're, we're creating speed and we're slamming into a wall and we're just slowing it down. Right. And, and, and but 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 the, that limitation, everybody forms in their mind the limitation is reduction of speed. It's not. It's actually, believe it or not, if you're hitting the lower body, you can create more speed because I can show you 30 sports that create maximum speed from hockey to baseball well, and everything else. Show, show more speed is produced in the swing speed, anyway. With the arms right here. It's from, it's, it's from basically this 75% right. of the speed is created from here right, to, to here. there. Right. It's creating unhinging right here. Yeah. For the speed it's not speed. length of swing. No, no. Look, look at Tony Finau. Yeah. It's not length look at of, John Rom. Look at John Rom. <laughs> it's not length of swing. It's, no. it's, it's, the, it's the ability to set your body and r r work the range right. of motion over there. Because here's what's interesting is you get all these traditional conventional golfers. You guys are watching the PGA this weekend. You watch it. And they're working this through impact, which is a 100% timing issue. And then they get nervous. So they'll get a little quick. Ooh. They'll get a little bit of poor ball position. We always talk about alignment, ball position, tempo. So they get fast. They get a little bit of, just a little bit off in the ball position. They're coming down that stretch. And all of a sudden, they get quick here. And they either snap hooks, hook it hooks, or hooks. dead block it. Hooks, hooks, and so, yeah. And, it's like, and, and so basically, by limiting range of motion, you can eliminate one side of the course. 100%. So, but let's do this. We got questions, right? I know that I know we're kind of waiting on a few people. So let's let's answer a few of those. Okay. Uh, when you guys were talking about sitting, did Mo dip in his swing? What does dip mean? Is that the question? Dip. Is that okay. the question? Okay. okay. So the question is, did Mo dip in his swing when he's sitting? Technically, I don't know what dip means. I mean, I, I, but let, let me just go with what he's doing. The dip, you would. The only things that you could potentially say dip would be the shoulder and the hip. So okay. what, what I don't ever want to see in in a in a good swing is so when I'm at the top of the swing, you see I, I'm bent forward. So that that's what we call you know our tilt, obviously. But you don't want the tilt to go closer to the ball, right? right. So you don't want to. That's that's losing space. Now what you see with Mo, because he went into his knee, his head goes down but it goes down in the direction of the spine. So it goes down, and I'll, I'll exaggerate this, it goes down this way, not that way. So that's, that's, that's because his, his, his pelvis is going down three inches. See that? So that downward move of the pelvis brings the head down. The pelvis is going down three inches because it's hitting the lead knee, which is setting him down, which creates the divot in the irons right. and every, yeah. And then, but, but, but it's not a dip right. down right that it's a technical movement that happens because he's going into his knees now keep in mind it's not this it's it's a forward movement into the knee as he's turning so i don't want to get into the lateral well it's interesting thing. though set give him a face on view here real quick okay you know I want, to, I want to envision this at home or when they're watching this we as our coaches and we do this very typically todd will set up and envision right now if i circled todd's head so i just put a circle around his head and he goes to impact that his head will go down and back slightly when you look at that race in that circle. And so then, and then, what's really important? Then, yeah, right. It comes out of the then circle. It comes out of the circle. It has but, to get it out of the circle. The head still thing is BS. Right. I don't, I don't like but it. so, but the head goes down and back because it's following his spine through impact. It's going down and back. So the spine's going forward, down and back. And now, as he releases, his spine comes up. But but here's the thing. It's a natural movement of right. the head based on body position. I don't want to get into okay. Make sure your head's here, right. head there. Don't worry about your head. I never one thing think about right. my head. I'm more concerned about arms and shoulder movement. Right. And that dictates where my head goes. Right. So I don't get into the whole head. But there are a lot of people thing. that when they, they say they dip, that's what they're watching with their head because they'll watch their head oh, dip I know. down. I just think you got to be careful what you're seeing. Right, right, in right. That. Okay. All right. Um, club head alignment. So okay. As you set the ball back, mm -hmm. um, does it become slightly open or should it be squared? Yeah. Behind? Club head alignment. So the question is, is that when you set the club behind the ball, so we said it, we, and Todd talked about why we do that. Is the club face square? It's a great question because it's one of the most common questions we get. Is the club square or what people think it should be is it should be naturally slightly a little bit open. And Todd's going to describe why the club should be so square. So it should back. be it should be square. Right. And as a matter of fact, I asked Mo this question because I was curious too of, okay, you set the club back there. Should, because it's not this. You're not putting the club back from a rotation. You're putting the club back from, from you're taking the rod and you're just tilting it back. So it's square. It should not be done through a rotation. So in other words, I'm tilting the club. I'm tilting my body and setting the club down. That should be square. Right. And so you don't want to have it open like this. An open would be okay. I'm going to put it back here like this and have it open. Nope. You're just tilted, keeping this. And the tilt of the body. We talk about in our instruction how important the tilt of the body is to get the club where okay. we want it. So now, 
So why, so let's just go to the next question. Why do you put the club behind the ball then? So why, so because that is a very unique thing. It's like when people see us, one of the first things they see and they pick up on, why did Mo put the club behind the ball? Now I know well, he put, yeah, okay, you know what he said he did. Go ahead. Okay, so Mo, would, I eliminate part of my backswing already into my turn. It eliminates a foot of the swing, all those things, which is all true. It basically is scientifically the easiest place to start a club because of club to body relationship. Sure. In other words, when I start the club here, it automatically goes back, right? It automatically it goes back into my motion. If I started here, my hands get behind the ball, it goes outside, right. especially if you start getting the longer clubs. Right. So it basically makes the, the pivot point relationship work the club perfectly inward, which is the plane, the single plane, onto the single plane, back down and in. So it's actually scientifically, it's basically the same thing as me attaching the club to my body here. And look what it does, it's behind the ball, mm -hmm. right? And I just turn it away. So it's the perfect relationship of a club to body. Now, let's clarify it because what you're seeing here is the club is beneath my nose, right? Right. Okay, but if I was seeing a driver and my stance is wider, see, now it looks like the club's eight inches behind the ball. It's still below your nose. It's still below my nose. Right. So you're seeing a difference in space between club and ball based on the club I'm hitting. If I was hitting a wedge. It's right up against it. I'm not changing anything of club to body. So here's basically length of a wedge. Here's the length of a wedge, right, mm -hmm. like this. So it's the same, it's the same exact mm -hmm. thing, you know, wedge, six iron, mm -hmm. driver, but I don't feel different right. holding the club. Right. The ball, it, the stance is narrow and the ball's, you know, in a different spot relative to the club head. Same address, all clubs, right. same address. Um, comment, uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, Easton's out playing nine holes right now, listen to you guys mm -hmm. in his ear pods, and uh, realized he was lifting his shoulder Stop doing it. Uh, hit the next shot from 136 yards, pure dead straight. Hold out for eagle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow, that's amazing. Actually, that's awesome. Who was that? Easton Sherwood. Maybe, cool. some, maybe some guys in the PGA this weekend should listen to us. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So can you imagine a guy out there in the PGA going, "God, I got to get." Uh, I just get yeah, yeah, your buds in. Yeah, but I got yeah, my driver better. I, I actually tell you, I think it's illegal to wear your buds in the USGA. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, get you would know. There you go. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, we had a couple of questions about the setup using wedges, but I think you kind of just answered that right. distance from the ball. Um, okay. That kind of changes right there. Um, we had some questions about. Uh, it seems like when I peer the ball, it seems to go straight, but then starts to fade off right. Um, is that something with side spin? Is there any good drills to kind of fix some? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you. A, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But here's what I want to do. Um, one thing I want to clarify for all, all of you that, uh, that aren't involved in our Single Plane Academy that are on the YouTube channel, we're a coaching company. Yeah. And, and our goal is to help, like I said earlier, our mission is to help everybody learn the single plane swing and become better golfers, have more fun and shoot lower scores and all the things that the single plane can do for you. The best way we can do that is to coach you. And I know it's, it's good to ask questions on here and I love to answer the questions and I'll do my best. But then nothing's better than us seeing your swing on a video so we can actually give you the exact thing you need to do. So whenever we answer questions about the swing, Tim and I have been doing this for 20 something years. Yeah. We, we've, been, we've done these webinars, I don't know, 5,000 of these webinars. Uh, we, well, think about it, we've combined this thing for 50 years combined, or 50 years yeah. combined, and we do at least two we've to three months. We've done thousands of these webinars, yeah. Yeah. and I always feel like I'm guessing a little bit every yeah, time we yeah. get that. Well, because wh here's what happens. When we don't get a video, we're giving your best guesstimate, you know, what happens the most. But here's the problem. It's amazing how many times we'll get some guy, this happens all the time. We'll have a gentleman or a lady who will, they're very religious about sending questions into our webinars. And we'll do it again and again, a lot of times the same question. And then we'll finally see him in person for the first time and go, okay, yeah, that wasn't it. Well, here, here's, the, here's the answer yeah. to your question. Right. Are you matching the model? Right. Okay. So, and, I, and the reason I'm, answer, I'm saying it that way is because what we do is we compare you to our model and we can easily, in two seconds, deduce exactly what the problem is. Is it an address and grip problem? Is it a backswing problem? Is it a rotation of the hands problem? Whatever, we'll, we'll figure it out. Our coaches, right now, you could be actually talking to our coach, figuring out your swing, but that's what we do. And so you said, okay, my face is open to the right. Now I have to say to you, I have to find where in the model right. that you're not matching it. So my guess is in the grip. 100%. Okay. So my guess is that you have the hand in, maybe the lead hand is in a, in too weak of a position, which maybe you're out of tilt. And then when you get to, uh, so I would, first thing I would do, which is what we always do, we teach in the order of the model, address and grip. And I say it that way. You can look at my, our instruction and know why I say it that way. Fix your body position, do what Tim did, fix your hand position. Right. Now, once your grip is good, 
and your body position is good, now we can see where in the swing that face is right. maybe getting open and probably will fix it. So I would say it's a, a grip issue. Because here's, here's what it comes down to. And when we do our schools, we, I, we in that, one of our last schools we had, we had an instructor who's worked with us for quite a few years. He's been teaching golf for a hundred, but he's been teaching single play now for quite a few years with us. He always talks about how he fought and fought and fought it when he was younger. Now he's in 70s, he's never hit it better. And I had him get up in front of the room and he gives us a little advice in the first day. And he said, get your grip, get your address, or he said, set up perfect, you're gonna be fine. And he goes, just understand that. He goes, he, and he said, I teach every day, I teach for hours every single day, and he goes, 95 to 99% of well, what I teach is address and grip. Uh, it's funny to ask our students yeah. after they've had this success right. to say, okay, if you had to look back at it mm -hmm. and say, what did it for you? It was like, I finally figured out address and grip. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Because, because just like Todd said, he's been saying this whole program today, is the fact that the if you get the address, and the address is talking distance of the ball, it's talking the proper staff, it's proper spine tilt, proper shoulder tilt, you know, and so on, all that. When you get that correct, the club naturally goes in the positions that exactly. it, 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 the body's only built with two that's arms, why, two legs. That's and, yeah. why on YouTube, uh -huh. to me, look, I love YouTube because I get to talk to people I would normally wouldn't get right. to talk to, but it's actually the worst place for yeah. instruction because people are searching around for yep. a tip. I'm not a tip guy. Right. I'm a systems guy. Build a swing system right. that it all relates. I had a, here's why I had a question yesterday, and I had a guy go, guy go, hey, can I put the club behind the ball with my conventional swing? I'm like, sure you can. It yeah. doesn't fit your system, right? Right. Right. And not only doesn't it fit your system, I'm like, what you're going to have is a conventional swing with your club behind the ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right. So it, there's no benefit to it, and th that's why it's part of our system. And so we have a system. The great thing about that is it makes it very easy to speed up your learning process. And the other so thing about fast. it is it makes it so easy to get clubs that fit the system. It makes it so easy to get practice that works for the system. It makes it so easy to make drills that work for the system. We're working towards one model, right. one model, one right. model. It's, it's, so it's, every it's, drill we've created, every club that's fit for you, everything we do is all working for you and your to get into our system towards a perfect single yeah. plane swing. And and by the way, the model is the answer because right. you're either matching or you aren't. So you having an issue? Let's go find that one thing that you're not doing in the model well, and it fixes it. And, and, and I'll give you the perfect example of this and then we can go to the next question. but. Um, you know, we're out, of, we're out of here at Oak Tree National, and there's a lot of really good players out here. I mean, yeah. th there's 18 touring professionals the out here. In fact, six of them are playing the PGA today. Mm -hmm. Okay, they play out here, they practice out here every day when they're in town, okay? And it's very interesting because I talked to them, and we talked to Taylor Gooch, we talked to you know, um, Victor Hobbin, we talked to Matthew Wolf, we talked to them, okay? And we talked to them about them working with their coaches. And it's so funny that you'll sit there and you'll, all of a sudden, three months later, you'll see something they're working on. And it's different. It's like, what are they doing? I don't understand yeah. what they're doing right now. It's totally different than what they were doing three weeks ago or a month ago or three months ago, okay? Well, the biggest thing we get is we'll get some, a guy or gal to come to us and they'll work with something for us a year or two. And then for some reason, life gets in the wind, they go away and they're not with us for four or five years. And then they come back and they go, wow, you guys are saying the same thing. Yeah. It's like, we're like, yeah, the model hasn't changed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, well. Uh, if you ask me, like you, you mentioned mm -hmm. how the single plane swing helped you. For mm -hmm. me, it helped me because I no longer guess anymore. Right. I right. literally don't guess at anything anymore. Well, I simply match the model. If people want a testament to this, and here's your testament. Todd is, you know, Todd was considered a little Mo. Okay, you know, because that was, Mo would look at Todd and say, okay, that, you know, he goes, that's me without a belly. That's me without a belly. So Todd, he'd say to Todd. And he, you know, a little belly now. Yeah, yeah, okay, up, yeah. You're getting, he's getting turned into Mo. Okay. He said, that's me without a belly. And so people would come to me and say, how can we figure it out? And they say in a short period of time. It really was a short period of time. How you speed it up. Yeah, how you speed it up. And there was a running joke, and I can tell you, I can literally give you the dates and the calendar of some of our friends that would do this, because we were, we were touring at the time. We were playing amateur golf and professional golf at the time. There was a running joke that Todd wouldn't hit a ball unless it was on camera. Yeah. No, it was, because we'd be out there pounding and pounding and pounding balls, all of a sudden Todd would disappear. He'd run inside. He'd go look at a camera, he'd come back out. He'd film it, he'd go back inside, he'd come back out. So we'd hit 500 balls, Todd had hit 20. But the reason he was is he's constantly going, that was the old VHS TV days, that wasn't right. the iPhone days. So he was running in, running out, running in, running Here's out, running out. Here's it was the I most know. monotonous thing he was doing. Here's what I know, we're all running out of time. Yeah, <laughs> so, Here's yeah. The, that's what I know. Yeah, I know. We're all running out of time. The clock's ticking, that's our only but, resource we're running out he of. Filmed and I don't want to waste my time. He filmed and he filmed and he filmed and he filmed and he filmed. Okay, and that was the most massive thing he could do because he didn't have anybody no, teaching him. It was the fastest way for me to right. find what I need to work right. on. I didn't want to sit there and go, what, it, was that, is that it? Is yeah, that it? Is right. that it? It was a guess, guess, guess. God, right. I hate guessing. So I was like, no more guessing. That's the, that's the shortcut, right. is stop guessing, find out exactly what it is you need to do, 
With the help of a right. coach, I think, to me, coaches are the most valuable tools in our society. Right. I hire coaches for everything I do, just 100%. like you do. 100%. Tim, what's the first thing you hired your, for your son when you wanted him to be a baseball player? <laughs> I hired three, three coaches. <laughs> three coaches? Three coaches. I hired a nutrition oh. coach, a training coach, and a baseball coach. Yeah. And, and, and here's what's funny. Here's what's so funny about it. I had this conversation with one of our students at our last school. I'm like, I'm like, you will take your grandson and you will hire him the best coaches. You'll, you, want to impl- you want him to discipline himself. You want him to work hard. You want him, mm-hmm. Why don't you do it for yourself? Yeah. Well, here's what's <laughs> interesting. We, uh, I, I don't want to go into that, but I have a I son. Don't want to go into that. I, I, well, we, we have a lot of that, but I have a son who's five foot ten, five foot eleven. We're a little bit taller. I'm five foot eleven. Okay. Probably 130 pounds soaking wet. Um, is an artist. He's like Todd. He's a dry, he's a left brain kid. He's a, he's a right brain kid, left left handed left handed thrower. He was not going to be a college athlete, okay? But what I did is I went and found the absolute 100% best baseball coach who had taught plane and mechanics, which was Tom House in California. And guess where we went? Yeah. And we went and found this guy who taught what? Biomechanics. But biomechanics. And I fell in love with the guy because yeah. we became like instantaneous friends. And 100%. I'm like, I'm like, we are cut from the same cloth. Right. 100%. Yeah. And so guess what? I created a system. He created a system and became a college athlete and a college baseball player because of what? And he had super great technique. On, on, on ball what? speeds. I mean, the, guy, the kid's amazing. Yeah. And, and it's because... He worked hard. Right. He made him work hard. And discipline. A, and he's not a 220-pound, no. six-foot fly guy and throw. No, no. no. He, he basically used efficiency. 100%. As, efficiency as his tool. And, that, and and the reason we got hooked into that is because exactly what we're doing here. Yeah, didn't, the, you didn't waste time with him. Nope. Nope. Yeah. And we Huge. always got to go back to a model. Huge. So, I mean, look, I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 90 years old, 80 years old, 70 years old, 60, 50. You and I need coaches. You need coaches because it speeds up the process and you stop guessing and you creates accountability, it makes you do things that you are, can't figure out yourself, 100%. all those things. So Jeff, who asked that question about it, he said there's there's really no spin when he's on his simulator, um, but he's going to join the coaching program so we can help him out. Perfect. I love it. Thank you so much. Perfect. That's great. We'd love to help you. So anybody, gonna, join the coaching. I'm going to tell you this very interesting because I'm going to tell you another quick thing about, you know, I can talk about my son forever, but this really relates because a lot of people understand this there. You know, the first time I took... Tristan out to an, it was a normal coach and this is why I started going to about the thing we went into this coach he said and the coach came up and he goes I'm gonna give you five things to work on okay and he told him that he wanted Tristan to do you know it's the whole thing about you know pitching off the mountain Tristan was like 14 or 15 and he goes I want five things to work on and I remember looking at the coach and I said time out this wasn't Tom House I said time out I said I want one thing to work on and one thing only and we're gonna master that and when we come back next time if we haven't matched that we're gonna go over that again why one thing though Be- because number one it was overload number two is I needed the one thing that would then what Lead because to the, the next one because the other thing were just compensations for the first point right. movement because what Tim just said was that when you fix the most important one thing which maybe it's address and grip it right. may solve the backswing issue. That's it the probably point. will solve the backswing and issue. And I remember the coach, the second time we came in, that we wanted the same thing, the third time we did, and he goes, you're the first guy or dad that's ever done that. Because all the dads want to overload the kids. Overload. Like, give me 45 25 things. things. We're going to get a better. No, yeah. and I said, one thing. One Because if he doesn't master that, the rest are relics that, you all of a sudden, the other stuff just disappeared. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, So you know. Yeah. We got a question from Jim. Um, asking about short game instruction. Is that a part of the Singleton Academy coaching service? 100%. Uh, Tim's, in fact, Tim's built the entire program. In fact, everybody. probably the most famous thing I've ever written. <laughs> so I'll say that is our Two Birds with One Stone instructional DVD. Why? It, because it relates It 100% everything. shows, and it's called Two Birds with One Stone for this reason. Because the first bird is you work on your short game, develop a great single plane short game, and you'll develop, you'll, you'll improve your scoring dramatically. Well, by the, way, by the way, I want to mention something. If you guys on YouTube are watching this, we have a Graves Golf On Demand, by the right. way, which is an app. Go to, is it watchgravesgolf.com if they're on their computer? Okay. okay. It's all right there. We have an app where you can, like, the guy on the course probably watched some of our stuff yeah, on the oh, course. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, all your stuff well, is it's, on there. The, so the first bird of the two birds on the stone is you work on your short game, you improve your scoring. But here's the most important part, is it's how it's directly related to the full swing. And I'm gonna show you an example of this. Okay. Because I'm gonna get out here and I'm just gonna hit a chip. Okay? So I'm gonna sit up over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit up, my lower body slightly open, my upper body square. I'm gonna hit a chip and I'm gonna hold the position. Odds and clever point something out, okay? I hit it, I hit a chip, I hold the position. Now, describe the knees, Todd. Knees are flexed. Towards what? Towards the target. Okay, towards the lead toe. Towards the lead right. toe. Okay. So the, the pelvis is in a perfect position. Right. Lead arm has aligned with the club right. again. Lead arm's above the trail arm, right. and the body's tilted in a perfect position. So, uh, so what am I right now? So You're uh, at it basically impact. I'm an impact position of a chip. Now, the only reason lower body is open is a shorter swing. Right. Right. Now go to your open. normal now I'm gonna go to full swing impact. Impact. Same. There's my fault. Now, same. same thing. So here's the issue. If you can't match that in a chip, which is about 
10, 15, 20 miles an hour, there's no way this earth you can master in the full right. swing. That's so we work and even even talking about how we do putting, how we get the hands down the line in the putter, how we're working on getting the hands ahead in the putter, how we're trying to get the hands, hands forward leading. in the putter, hands yeah. leading, trying to get shaft lean. Okay, so, by the way, let's talk that. Why do you want shaft lean? Shaft lean, because number one, that's one way you strike the ball. Number two is the shaft has to be ahead of the club show because show okay. face on what compression okay. show face on what compression is. Okay. So every shot you hit in golf, every single shot you hit, when you make impact, they're shaft lean. And look, so, the hands have to lead right. to get compression. Now a driver's on a tee, hands are still leading, you just hit it off the tee, right. but the hands still lead, so compression. So you always have shaft lean. Now grab my putter in my bag real quick, grab the one putter. I'll show you the number one air golfers make. So you guys want to fix them at home, here's my, here's my ultimate free tip of the day, okay? They sit up over a putter, they get over top of a putter, and they putt, and they do this. And well, look, they, close the face. They close the face, the and they lose shaft. Hand, fa hands not towards the target. Right. And guess what happens? No alignment. Face is closed. Well, the, number one, if you put that in a driver, that's a slice. Number two, or it's a pull. But they lose shaft lean. Well, here's the problem. If you're losing shaft lean with even a putter, you, your body is sensitive. It's understanding that. It's understanding the hands getting behind the ball. You lose shaft lean with everything in the club. This is why, and it blows our students' mind. I will get a student out. I've never seen him before in my life. I'll get him in a school, and the first thing you do is we go putt. And I'll sit here and they'll do this with the putter. And I'll sit there and say, you don't make a dip with your irons. You pull your hybrids, you top your hybrids, you pull your driver, or you, you know, I'll tell them you've lost this disc. I'll tell them everything they've done. And they look at me like, what are you, magicians? I smoke in here. Yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. I saw it because of the motion of the putter compared to anything else. Well, it's so amazing. It's a true story. We can see in a putting stroke their golf swing. 100%. Yeah. And that's where we did the two birds with one stone. Right. Because that showed how it was all related. So now you train your way up. So, and the other thing is, so as you work on your putting, you're fixing your driver. As you work on your putting, you're fixing every club in your bag. As you work on your chip and your pitching, you're fixing every club all in the bag. related. Yeah, it's all related. It's the training. And here's what's interesting. It's amazing how many guys that study martial arts will watch two birds with one stone and oh, go, that's, that's how I learn martial arts. That's how you learn any right. technical activity with right. your body. And here's the thing about it. And you get this as well as I do. And I've done it the last three lessons I've given. I will, I will stop somebody. I'm like, look, all I want you to do is hit short, Hip shots and, and hold right. your hands down the line. 100. They'll hit like three balls and go, "Okay, I got them." No, 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 right. no, no, no. Can we do a thousand of those? Right. Because right. that's a fundamental movement to 100%. this compression. And then we'll add some speed to it because all you want to do is add some speed to right. it. But that that's fundamental movement that has to and be trained. I'll tell you the second thing, and then we'll go to the next question. But we do short game schools, and we do schools that are directly two day schools directly to the short game. So I do is putting, chipping, pitching. We do some bunker work, but all probably, it is for two solid days. Our most popular school. Which one of our most popular schools? But it's very interesting because it never fails. We the longest club we hit is a is a is a is a pitch shot like a 100 120 wedge shot. So you are hitting a full wedge, but that's it. Okay, everything down from a full wedge down, and we work on it for two days. It's an amazing school. Two things we get from that school. Number one is they call us a week later and say it's the greatest score I've ever shot in my life. Okay, but here's the second one. They'll call us a week later and go, I'm hitting my driver the best I've ever hit it. Or they'll call us and say, I'm actually making a div with my irons. And I'm like, yeah, because yeah. we went in and we showed you how to create angle with the hands. We showed you how to create angle to the ball. We showed you how to create shaft with a short club. And they worked on it for a lot. And all of a sudden, they're hitting it better. Compression. Yeah. And by the way, compression is speed because now you're getting the energy out of the ball. So right. compression is speed. Next question. Two questions. Okay. Um, when I'm in between clubs and I feel like I need to hit a three-quarter shot with a longer club, I feel like I come out of the swing and fade it to the right and short, not fully committed. Any answer? Choke okay. down. Yeah. Period. Easy. Think logic. Logic on this is everybody's trying to like figure out the speed of the swing by reducing body movement, and then that's why you come out of the shot. Everybody does that. Mm -hmm. Even Tim and I do that if we try to do that. So the key is, is what you're really trying to do in that scenario is you're in between clubs. So I'll give you an example. Like if I'm, I hit a seven iron 165. So if I'm 160, right, and I can't get my eight iron 160, I will just take my hands and move them down about an inch and a half on my seven iron, right. and now that ball will go about 160. So what I've effectively done is I've shortened the lever of the club. I make the same aggressive hard swing. I'm not changing my sequencing. Right. Ball goes shorter. Choke down. Which is, which is very. Which is which is Tim's getting into single leg clubs. Well, no, I know no, you're no, gonna get in there. No, no, this this we're gonna get into. In our short game to school, we have a whole session of wedge charting. Uh -huh. And so most people that go out with wedges have like a pitching wedge, a gap, a sand, and a lob, and there'll be 10, 12 yards between them. And they'll say, so I hit my pitching wedge, you know, 100 yards, I mean, just throw this out, and my gap wedge, 90, what do I do at 95? We talk about how you choke down to create that gap in the middle. And then what ends up happening is they learn wedge charting, and they learn how to do everything, and then even below the lob wedge, they learn how to do all that, and they realize, I can put that into my 7-iron, I can put that into my 8-iron. Yeah. And that's what the, and that's, Dude, what, that's how I play golf. That's how you play golf. So here's the thing, I'm not a fan of single length clubs, I don't want to get into no, all that, no. let's not get into all that, right. but 
I'm not a fan because I move my hands up and down my right. golf clubs continually through a round because I'm never on my number. Because there's a natural distance for a shorter club because the amount of leverage you can create. And if you have single lane clubs, you're creating too much distance. That's why when you talk to somebody like Bryson, yeah. they hit their wedges way too long, okay? And they create amount of too much stress in their body. And everybody thinks his injury from Bryson was swinging too hard. It wasn't from swinging too hard, it was from wedges that were too steep into the grass. Yeah. And just, he's, he's had bad wrists because of the wedges yeah, so steep true. in the grass. Divots. Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't want to, we, yeah. we, they can, if they want to know about clubs, we can do that later. Contact us. Tim, <laughs> yeah. Tim's got a whole single plane fitting regimen. I love you guys. We'll put it in the, in a description. Yeah. You can go get single plane fit. It's a free fitting to make sure your clubs fit your single plane. But we're just not a huge fan of single plane clubs. But, but that is a good point though. Guys, if you want to get fit for the methodology we're doing, the single plane methodology, we have a free putter fitting and a full, a full swing fitting. And you guys, it's for free. I probably do 20, 30 of these a night at least please do it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we'd be happy to help you. Fitting's a big deal, it's yeah. a big deal. Yep. Um, how can one swing model fit multiple body types? Can you talk about that for a second? Well, body type, like body type, people have different bellies. Matter of fact, if you got a gut, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm growing one on purpose, but, but <laughs> if you got a gut or whatever, this is actually a better swing 100%. for you. <laughs> because I actually did this, I did a, remember that webinar I did where I put a big pillow here? Look, guys, yeah. this gives you space. So, look, it's not it's not about fitting one body type. People, have, the industry has said, oh, everybody's got different body types. Here's the fact of the matter: you have range of motion based on joints. You have range of motion based on pelvis position, and I can put your body, no matter what size you are, into the same range of motion issues. Now, I will say this: injuries are a problem. Like, if you have an injured shoulder and you got a broken arm and you're and your arm is bent, you can't straighten it. Yeah, that is a physical limitation that has changed your body structure. Right. So those are things you have to coach. Our coaches help you through that a lot of times. Well, the two things that we'll do, number one, our coach will help you through individually, but you're still gonna get a single plane. But number two is we make it do a club adjustment for it for those different body types. So, I, I wanna say this though. Yeah. You, you can talk body types all you want. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can really talk every different type of body, big, small, tall, right. long, short arms, right. whatever, okay? Tell this golf club that. Right. It has to be on plane. I don't care what body type you are, this has to be on plane. So if you're a big guy, you gotta take that club and you gotta move your body in a way that puts it on plane. If you're a little guy that, that's skinny, you gotta put the club on plane. So you've gotta get the club on plane. You gotta, and by the way, I recommend finding the single plane swing because it's the easiest way to do that. And your body's no different than mine. Maybe you're bigger or smaller or whatever, but you still get a club on plane. The reason that we tend to, and our company has for years and years and years, tracked, attract the guy that's the guy or the gal that's a little bit older, or the guy that's a little bit bigger belly or whatever you want to call it, or has arthritis or starts getting out of shape, loses flexibility, is because when we stand away from the ball further, we can clear the arms with what they will say is less movement because they're not, they can't pull away from it anymore. But here's what's interesting: is over the years since we started this company 20 some years ago, they started to realize that same motion creates the most speed and the most efficiency of speed. That's why yeah. you see that motion in the long drive champions. That's why you see yeah. that motion in like the Bryson T. Jambeau and these guys, because they realize that the effectiveness and you can also create the most speed that way. Because it's, it, it doesn't matter what sport or what physical activity you're doing, you still got to be able to clear the arms across the body to create the speed. If you got a belly that gets in the way. You got to get the club back right. to impact plane. Right. I mean, this club I, this club's designed on a plane. Right. You've got to get it back to its plane. That's the way it's designed. You, you don't have a choice. And let me you, this, this, and, you can't hit this club like this. Let me give you a little you secret. It's, it's really obvious. You guys can see it all day. Take videos of the young guys that played on tour. I'm talking like the Miguel Jimenez's. I'm oh, talking yeah. about the, you know uh, what I'm going with this. Wayne Grady. The Wayne Grady. All these guys. Take the young ones when they were skinny. And they were standing really close to the ball. And they tried to Steve, lift out of it. Steve Elkington. Steve Elkington is a perfect example. And they jump out of it. Now. They start getting this belly, they start getting fat, they're earning L's, they start getting bigger. I mean, we just all you do and get bigger. Well, now they can't clear that anymore. So what happens? They start getting away from the golf ball. And the only guys on the senior tour and close are the Jim Furyk's of the world who somehow maintain skinny, who somehow maintain, well, there's so few of them. Every single one, if you compare the video, has gotten further away from the ball, they've gotten yeah. wider, they've gotten closer single player. But, but I want to I mention something, because this is, and, and we may have to cut this video up into yeah. two to three yeah. different videos. I don't like the term method for our swing. Yeah, I don't. And I agree. here's why. Method implies that there's very there's variables like oh we can method we can put the arm in this much rotation this much right I we we teach a swing the single plane swing which is not a method it's a ideal body position range of motion thing so in other words if I if I did what you did Tim and you guys can do this experiment with yourself lift your shoulder up turn your arm this way hold your arm and turn your arm that way and you can't go further than that I promise you you can't. Not unless you have some surgery that's allowed you to. Right. But here's the thing, that's not a method. 
That's the natural movement of range of motion. So in other words, your body's going to do this. Why not put it in its limit? and that creates the swing. The swing isn't something you're trying to find, right? right? It's your body going into the right positions. Right. Does that, that make sense? No, yeah, and those positions then we put into a model, and then we say, how close can you match this model? Exactly, the model. So match the model right. and hit the positions, and that's, that's the easy way to do this. And that's the ultimate reason why people love our methodology so much is because we're giving them a model they're trying to match. And the closer yeah. they get to the model, the better they are. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I don't want to go too crazy on that question, but the other thing would be like, hey, should, so should there be a skinny, a tall skinny swing and a short fat swing no, it's a, and a medium no. skinny swing and a, a ultra fat swing? No. I mean, the body is, the club has a design, it, it fits you, and you need to get the club back to the impact point. Well, That's what you gotta here's do. a perfect example. I mean, let's go to sort of the other extreme, then we'll, we have another question. Let's, yeah. Okay, let's so the extreme. Let's pretend you were a traditional conventional golfer and I had you 20 inches from the ball, and all of a sudden you walked into the academy and I had a belly in front of me that was this huge, and I could not get my elbow there. What would you tell me? Get away. You'd have to, so now you just changed your, the way you taught me. Because you're teaching everybody yeah. else to get to this yeah. distance of the ball, but yeah. you're now saying get yeah. away oh, from the ball. Oh, you can't get to it. Go away yeah, you can say yeah. so now you yeah. just change. Well, that's what I'm saying is. And so, 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 no, so let's say, no, no, let me ask you this question. So let's say then I went and lost 100 <laughs> pounds. I was going to say the same thing. And I went and lost 100 pounds, and I came back, you say get close. Yeah, no, that, that, that's what I'm it saying. It makes no sense. doesn't make any makes sense. No sense. Yeah. So, exactly. yeah, because I mean that, so, so I can. Common sense. I like common sense stuff. Let's talk about having to get a pre-coaching call. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. So. So basically what we have is the, is the quiz, right, 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 right. which is the rate your improvement. Uh, there's a link that I'm, we're going to give you. And by the way, look, you can email me at Todd G at gravesgolf.com if you can't figure this stuff out. But we have a rate your improvement quiz. What this thing is, is you go through this process and we're going to see where you are on our scale and rate you on how close you are to, to developing your single plane swing. But, but better yet, we're going to connect you with a coach and that coach I love coaches, and he is going to be your personal coach. He's going to help you then start building a plan to get this stuff really fast. So that's the whole purpose of the okay, race. Here's what, here's what it comes down to. There was, there's numerous studies done, but one in particular that was done that showed that when the average golfer practices, they get no better. In fact, they took 100,000 golfers. They went and had them practice for an hour. They went and test them say, say, this, say this slower. Say okay. this again. Okay. No, because okay, so I want to make sure they understand study, this. Okay. The study they was. did a study, and the, and the PGA did this study, and what ended up happening is they took 100,000 golfers. They had them go, they had them, te they tested them. They did it by, they rated their swing, they went and had certain targets, they went and they tested everything in the short game, they gave them this test. They then had these golfers go practice for an hour. Then they tested them after the exact same test. It was a pre-test and post-test with one hour practice in between. Then then compared the results. Well, everybody out there thinks, well, they should have gotten better. Well, now here's what happened. 40% showed no improvement. They stayed exactly the same. 50% got worse. So out of 100,000 golfers, 50,000 got worse, 40%, 40,000 got no better. Only 10% of golfers, 10% improved. So what it showed was if you practice like a typical average golfer, you're going to get no better or worse every single time. And here's what happens. When we define worse, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to get frustrated. You're, you're going to quit. You're going to quit. Okay. Yeah. So what, what this quiz is all about, it's, by, it gives you a point system by asking these questions and it shows you what percentage yeah, you're in. It, it basically says, find a way to measure yourself. It says, are you in that 50% group? Are you in that 40% group or in the 10% group? So it really doesn't matter if, what type of golfer you are. It shows you your ability to get better. Yeah, and bite. then it shows you your ability, how fast you'll improve. Because the yeah. higher the score, the faster you'll improve. Because cool. we've had a lot of people that are freaked out. They've been with us for a few years and they're like going, I only scored middle of the range. I said, yeah, why? And we started discussing why. Because guys, we're going to optimize your practice. We're going to optimize the, you getting better. So, because here's the, because we match, always get Match this, the model. Match the model. Because here's, here's what we get. Every single time people come to us and say, what is the goal of Gray's Golf? The goal of Gray's Golf is for you guys to get better every single time you practice, which will increase your enjoyment of the game by matching the model of the single plane swing. And speed it up. And, to, and then for you guys, and we say that, now you guys have come to us and say, how can I do it faster? Yeah. How can I do it faster? How can I do it faster? We're like, yeah. there you go. And that's what we do. Yeah. That's 100% what we do. And this quiz or this test, it's not a test, it's just a quiz, is really it's just cool. It's questions you answer. Yeah, questions you answer, and then it rates you. But yeah. the beauty of it is, let's say you score in the middle or low, every category, you just improve each category, and you're going to start scoring higher. Yeah. It's really easy. It basically, it's, it helps you deduce where your weaknesses right. are. Right, and that's right. what the coaches can help that's you with. That's key. But isn't that the goal of coaching? Is 100%. To find your weaknesses. 100%. Yeah. All right. But it's Good. interesting because that's the weakness of practice. Oh, yeah. It's not the weakness. Of, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah, interesting it's part. It's the weakness of their uh, ability uh, to practice, practice. professionally. Yeah, because the, the, what they're doing. Yeah, the, because everybody thinks this. It's a weakness of like their grip or their setup, or whatever. Uh, we're going to tell you the weakness of how inefficient you are practicing and how using your time. Right. Yeah. And that's the beauty exactly. of this. Yeah. So it's all about speeding it up. Right. Um, 
the last thing I put a link for Tuesday night for Plain Talk with Gray. It's going okay. At 7 p.m. that they can register. Plain Talk is that the public? Yep. Okay. So look, guys, if you're new to, the, to all this stuff on my channel, the uh, we do lots of shows. Right. Some of them are for members only. Some of them are for public. We call Plain Talk. Next Tuesday, are you doing the Plain Talk yep. Tuesday? Yep. So Tim will be on next Tuesday. Um, what time is that? 7? 7? So there's a link below. you got to register for it. So register for the next Plane Talk. It's a free event. Tim's it's got be, giveaways. We got what, what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? about this right here. Rate your chance for improvement. Okay. It, it breaks out every category. Okay. Are you going to go through in detail? In this? 100%. Yeah. So Tim will be covering this thing. Go through it and then watch the show on next Tuesday. So make sure you register for that. No, it literally breaks down. But the interesting part is every category, it gives you drills. Like it shows, let's show you a drill that you do this. Let's show you a tip that you do here. So it has a lot of instruction there too. A Good. lot of instruction. So, and by the way, if you enjoyed this content, I, I like doing this with Tim. We, we don't, we're not in the same, uh, it's, not, it's not the same Zip, state. We're right not in the very state. Very but what we do, we love to do these things. So if you enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe button on the channel and let me know your comments below on if you enjoyed this if there's any questions we can ask look we'll get on there and if you have some questions we want to direct you in the right place so yeah. well thanks for having me today so i think we got to play it again next week or two aren't we Somewhere yeah there? we got we got a tournament coming up we'll yeah. keep you updated on so, how we play so in other words i'm sure i'll, I'll hit some balls before he, he'll then, probably maybe. practice once <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it won't yeah. matter yeah so, it won't, so, so, so sorry are we like four for four i mean i'm gonna we are we're four for four yeah we're like yeah so we won everything we played in yeah so well I, I'm, I'm putting a stymie on us that one okay well one but, of the problems we have here is they've closed our club all the so i haven't played a putt yeah great since last time we great. played <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us we'll see you again thanks guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.